Okay, so you're diving into the world of AI. Smart move. Uh -huh. It's the future, or so everyone says. Right. But um, let's be real. Yeah. It's not all sunshine and roses. No. There are risks too, and those are worth understanding. That's why we're going straight to the source today: the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. They're like the wise owls of tech, always a few steps ahead. They really are. Uh -huh. NIST has been setting the standard for decades, and their AI risk management framework, or AI RMF, as it's usually called, is becoming the go-to guide for anyone serious about AI. And get this, it's voluntary. NIST is enforcing anyone's hand here. Right. They're providing a framework that organizations can choose to use, which I think really speaks to their focus on building trust. Mm, absolutely. And what's interesting about this framework is how it defines AI risk. It's not just about whether an AI system might mess up. It's about how BD the consequences would be if it did. So it's not just, oops, the AI made a typo. It's more like, Hold on, the AI just rerouted all the traffic lights in the city. That's a whole different ballgame. Exactly. And this is where AI risk gets a lot more complex than, say, the risks of traditional software. Let's take the Oracle problem, for instance. Okay, now you have to explain that one. It sounds a bit like something out of a Greek myth. Well, in a way, it is about flawed predictions. Imagine an AI system being trained on data that's supposed to represent the real world, like an all-knowing Oracle. But what if that data isn't entirely accurate or complete? The AI's decisions will be flawed no matter how sophisticated the algorithm is. So it's like trying to bake a cake using a recipe that's missing key ingredients. You might end up with something that looks like a cake, but it's not going to taste quite right. A perfect analogy. Yeah. And in some situations, those flawed results could have serious consequences. Right, because we're relying on AI to do more and more these days. Okay, so we've established that AI risk is a big deal. But what makes AI trustworthy in the first place? I feel like that term gets tossed around a lot. It does feel like one of those buzzwords right up there with like synergy. And... Paradigm shift. Right. But when it comes to something as powerful as AI trustworthy, it takes on a whole new meaning. Exactly. And thankfully, NIST has broken down trustworthy AI into seven key characteristics. These characteristics provide a roadmap for building and using AI in a way that mitigates risks and maximizes benefits. Okay, so no more vague buzzwords. Give me the concrete stuff. What are these characteristics and why should I care? Well, two of the most critical, in my opinion, are explainability and transparency. Imagine an AI system making a decision that directly impacts you, like whether you get approved for a loan or not. Wouldn't you want to understand how that decision was made? Absolutely. No more black boxes. Right. We need to be able to look under the hood and understand the reasoning behind AI's actions. Exactly. And that's where explainability comes in. It means designing AI systems that can provide clear and understandable justifications for their decisions. So it's not just about the AI being right or wrong. It's about being able to trace back its logic to understand the why behind its actions. That makes a lot of sense, especially as AI starts playing a bigger role in our lives. And transparency goes hand in hand with explainability. It's about being open about how AI systems are developed, deployed and used. It's about building trust by being upfront about the data that's used to train AI, the limitations of the algorithms and the potential biases that might be baked in. So it's about honesty and accountability, mm. not trying to sweep any potential problems under the rug. Which makes me think about something you mentioned earlier about the human factor in all of this. It's not just about perfecting the algorithms, is it? Not at all. In fact, one of the most refreshing things about the NIST framework is its emphasis on human involvement throughout the entire AI life cycle. It's like you always hear, technology alone isn't the solution. We need humans in the loop, making judgments, providing context, and ensuring that AI is used responsibly. Precisely. The NIST framework outlines four key functions. Govern, map, measure, and manage. And every single one of these functions relies heavily on human judgment and decision making. Okay, so let's break those down a bit, Govern. I'm guessing that's about setting clear expectations and guidelines for how AI is used within an organization. You got it. It's about establishing leadership, defining risk tolerance, and making sure that AI aligns with an organization's values and goals. And then you've got map, measure, and manage. Those sound almost like steps in a process. They are very much connected. MAP is all about understanding your AI system in relation to its environment. What risks are out there, what are the potential impacts, and who are the stakeholders involved? Okay, so you're getting a clear picture of the landscape before you even start deploying AI. Exactly, then comes measure. This is where you actually start assessing the performance of your AI systems, collecting data, and figuring out if your risk mitigation strategies are actually working. So it's like a continuous feedback loop, always learning, always adapting. Precisely. 
And that brings us to manage, which is all about having the right processes in place to address any risks that pop up. It's about responding effectively to incidents, making improvements, and making sure that your AI systems remain trustworthy over time. Wow. So it's really a holistic approach from setting the ground rules to constantly monitoring and adapting. No wonder this framework is gaining so much traction. It's truly <laughs> impressive. And NIST has gone the extra mile by creating additional resources to make it even easier for organizations to implement. They have something called the AI RMF Playbook, which provides practical guidance, real-world examples, and even templates to help organizations put everything into action. That's so smart. It's the one thing to have like a, a theoretical framework, right. but having those practical tools and resources is what really empowers people to, you know, to use it. So to anyone listening who might be thinking, this is all fascinating, but I'm not building AI systems, so why should I care? That's a great question. And here's the thing. Understanding these principles of trustworthy AI isn't just for you know tech experts. It's about becoming an informed citizen in an increasingly AI-driven world. Whether you're a business leader, a policymaker, or just someone who wants to understand the forces shaping our future, knowing the basics of AI risk and what constitutes trustworthy AI is incredibly valuable. Yeah. It's like, it's like knowing how to read the news critically or understanding how your government works. These are essential skills for navigating the modern world. I couldn't agree more. We can't just passively accept whatever AI throws our way. We need to be having thoughtful conversations, asking critical questions, and demanding that AI be developed and used in a way that benefits all of us. So well said. It's about shaping the future of AI together rather than just letting it happen to us, right? Exactly. And that starts with understanding the risks, embracing transparency, and demanding accountability. On that note, I think we've given our listeners a lot to chew on today. The world of AI can feel complex and even intimidating at times. But remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about how AI works, the better equipped we'll be to navigate its challenges and harness its full potential. Absolutely. The future of AI is not predetermined. It's up to all of us to shape it. Beautifully said. Until next time, keep asking those tough questions and keep diving deep.